no better man to dig up some dirt on your cheating spouse. Richard Martinez, you're very welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello, Elaine. Thank you for inviting me. And please be reassured that I'm not investigating anybody on your show. Well, I would, I? Well, no, I, would, I, I would hope not, because I'm actually the only one in the studio at the moment. So if you were, <laughs> I'd be slightly worried. How did you get involved in this business in the first place? Yes, well, after leaving the Royal Air Force Reserves after nine years, I was looking for something just as challenging, but was good for society as well and earned a good living and where I could be my own boss, working my own hours. So I looked around and I didn't want to start from the bottom again. I wanted to be my own boss. And then I found a one-year course, a diploma on running your own private detective agency. So I did the one-year course and advertised in 2000. So from then on, it's been amazing how many people I've helped, uh, celebrities, VIPs, members of the public, uh, both domestic and commercial, and basically finding them the truth. That's that's what I do. Yeah, people have an, uh, a kind of an idea of private investigators going around with their 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 Mac and a perfect sneaking around bushes and things like that. But it's a lot more technical and forensic these days. Give us an idea of what you actually do. Yes, well, a lot of it is evidence gathering, either for civil cases or criminal cases. I have uh, quite a few uh, gadgets, uh, whether it be uh, night vision cameras, um, zoom lenses, and it's very cost effective to run a private detective agency. From a small uh, 12 times magnification on your iPhone to 50 times magnification on your iPhone, uh, we also use um, debugging devices, electronic debugging devices. Um, wow. and drones and all the equipment we use we follow the the guidelines the rules so for example a, a gps tracker we are legally allowed to put that under a vehicle in the interest of justice under article 8 of the human rights act so if your partner is cheating on you and you want to find out if it's if it's true or not if they're putting your health and your moral well-being in danger then in the interest of justice and to help uh, family life we are legally allowed to put a small tracker underneath a vehicle as long as it doesn't affect the performance of the vehicle. Um, we, that's some of the low-tech stuff I, I use. Obviously, we have to use um, disguises to make sure we're not found. So, you know, we've got <laughs> glasses with cameras, you know, that, it's me, by the way, I'm still here. Uh, wow, we have I never would have with... guessed. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it just makes for, it's fun, you know, things, it can go wrong, like when I was on a train and uh, the, the subject got off, then got on, and uh, my uh, colleague was saying they're off, they're on there, and I was trying to get off and on. And then I was, basically, they got off, the, the train started moving, I had to get off, and you can actually, on a tube train, with a lot of effort, open the doors. Um, so as the train's moving, I was pulling the doors open, and um, you're supposed to be discreet, but unfortunately, the subject was there on the platform walking past as I'm in the doorway, going along uh, on the train um, <laughs> and he could clearly see me. So uh, sometimes it can be, um, you know, a bit, a bit uh, jokey, but other times it can be very serious indeed. Uh, I have customers on the phone crying absolutely in tears that they, they've been told that they are the crazy one by their partner who is a, a very effective player. You know, they're playing their partner, they're saying they're not um, cheating, but... Some people can be very believable um, and they know what to do to, to make their partner look crazy. And then their partner will, the person who feels they've been cheated on, they will do the smart thing. They'll get a private detective and they'll get the evidence they need to prove to their family and friends that they're not crazy, that their partner is cheating. And then they can go to court if they yeah. wish to get a divorce if need so, be. So the majority of your work, would it be true to say that it's, it's through situations like that that a spouse is cheating and you need hard evidence? Because if you love somebody, it's so easy to believe that, of course, darling, I'm not doing anything. Of course I'm not. And, uh, and that's the reason, basically, people come to you because you need it actually in black and white in front to confront them so they can stop denying it. Exactly right, Elaine. If a person hasn't got the video evidence, then you'll be amazed how well somebody can talk their way out of it uh, you know a professional player can have many uh, relationships and they know how to pull the wool over people's eyes but when you've got several videos showing that they're cheating then uh, there's nothing really they can do and then at least the person can 
can move on. Or so a lot of my customers, they, they use me as a deterrent. They'll say to their partner who have, has been found out by one of my many methods, either my lie detector or surveillance videos and such. And they'll say, look, if, if you do it again, I'll let you off this time and hopefully we'll go on a straight and narrow and have a happy life. But I'll be checking on you. You know, we'll do, Richard has integrity testers and such, and they'll, and well, along with the lie detector, we'll do a check on you every six months, they'll say. So what a great deterrent to put them on the straight and narrow. Yeah, uh, I suppose in criminal cases, I know lie detectors aren't admiss are not admissible in court anymore, but on a more, more, uh, a more civil side of things, they are. But how, how easy is it to cheat one? Like you have discovered, how to pass a lie detector test. I would think you'd have to be, not that you are one, but you'd have to be pretty psychopathic to be able to, to pass one. There, there are techniques and we look, out, we look out for those techniques. And for example, I mean, I'm, it's on the internet, so I'm happy to tell you one of the techniques. And, and what that is, is when you're telling the truth, my, the sensors on my lie detector will calibrate and show when you're telling the truth and you're calm. But when you tell a lie, normally your body becomes a bit stressed. You'll create more sweats on your fingertips, your vocal cords will change your voice, your heartbeat will change and so forth. My senses will pick all that up. To, to try to um, beat that, those senses, what some people have been known to do is uh, put, pinch themselves, put a nail into the finger, bite their tongue, put a nail in their shoe to cause their body stress when they're telling the truth. So when they're telling a lie, they unstress their, themselves and then it evens out. So that's one way of, of trying to cheat the lie detector. But we look out for that. And so, so you know, that's we can spot people and it's very accurate, you know. So my, my wife tries it on me quite regularly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, we've got a great relationship. And it's amazing about relationships in that, you know, 100 years ago or 200 years ago, the average life expectancy might have been around the 50-year the mark. Now we're getting up to the 90s. So when somebody's married for life, really they've mar been married for the, the lifespan of two uh, lifetimes. So it's it's quite a, an ask, a big ask yeah. to, uh, for somebody to stay with you from the age of 20 upwards. But, yeah. you know, we can help be a deterrent and we can help get you peace of mind. But also, Elaine, I have two techniques that can help you stay on the, your partner stay on the straight and narrow. Yes, right. Share them with us, please. Okay, no charge. Uh, I will tell you these tips because <laughs> I understand. <laughs> I understand you're you're now in a one year relationship and uh, going well. But you've heard of the seven year itch, I, I assume. Yeah, is that a tr is that a true is that a truth? Sorry, it, it, it is a truth. It's and I, I'll tell you the details about it because a lot of people, quite rightly, as you say, you know, they thought it was an old wives' tale. But a lot of my customers, they were coming to me around, you know, for a serious divorce case, around the seven year, 14 year, 21 year mark, multiples of seven. And I thought, my goodness, this seven year itch thing, it, it's, it's happening too often. I'll have to look into this. So I looked into it and it's an instinct that men have from caveman times. Seven years, Elaine, was the right amount of time for the caveman to meet the, the cave woman, um, make them pregnant, and for the child to then get to the age of five or six, and that was the age where the child could then run, would be strong enough to run and fend for themselves with the mother. So the, 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 the male caveman could think um, instinctively, OK, uh, he's done his bit to procreate. They, they, he can let them go and run, uh, survive for themselves. And he would then procreate with another woman. And so the seven-year cycle yeah. would continue then. But what about that women, though? What about women? Women get itchy too. I don't mean that in a gynecological sense, but in a general yeah, sense, it does work the opposite way. Yes, that all comes down to what women desire instinctively, which is security uh, as a priority. So whether it's financial security or, uh, or, or physical security, uh, women have an instinctive urge to feel secure, looked after uh, yeah. by a capable uh, person. But uh, with a seven-year itch, there's a way that if you're if you get to seven years and i felt it myself in relationships i've been uh, in previous uh, uh, uh relationships uh, with uh, girlfriends uh, and i've been uh, engaged i've been engaged three times and i felt that seven year itch and only when i realized when i looked into it that that instinct can be overcome and the way to overcome it elaine or all your viewers um when they get to around seven years 
the man is going to, for several months, suddenly lose interest. They might not realise it, but it's an instinct. What you need to do, Elaine, is change your image. Make the man think subconsciously that you're a new person. Just change oh. your wardrobe, change your hairstyle. You? Just Richard, would you actually be bothered? Because if you've got someone who's inclined to bugger off with somebody else, well, let let them off with it, I say. But I think and now what's very interesting at the moment, I think, and I'd like to ask your opinion on this, in this time of lockdown, the amount of people who are perhaps being very, very naughty and very, very bold, but having the freedom to do so as they used to, uh, what are the telltale tell, tell signs now if you have a partner that is, they've no, you can't work late at the office anymore. You can't go on work trips anymore. They don't exist. How, what's a red flag for you now at the moment if, if you might suspect that your partner's cheating? Yes, great question, Elaine. Um, in, in this time of lockdown, I'm getting quite a lot of calls. I was surprised. I thought the lockdown would stop people uh, having affairs and such. But what it's tending to show is the cracks in the relationship. And a lot of people who are now not at work many of them had relationships at work so suddenly they no longer to see they're no longer able to see their lover at work so they're now at home 24/7 and they're starting to have more arguments uh, with their partner less interest in them and saying they they're going to go out for a jog which you're allowed to uh, go out for exercise and during that time they're arranging to meet up with their lover but the the they are getting frustrated and missing their lover because uh, they're not seeing so, them at work. So not, obviously, not everyone, but a small percentage yeah. uh, I'll get I'll sh I'll through. So for jog, if you're, you're, you've got a partner who's not inclined to exercise and suddenly they're putting on their Lycra and going for a cycle or a two-hour jog, that's literally sirens are going off in your head. That's a sign, but you women are very good with intuition. Yeah. And uh, a lot of women tend to subtly notice the emotional changes, the disinterest, uh, lack of physical touching. Also, if you, if you challenge someone about an affair, the signs of them lying, even without a lie detector, are if they look to their right, if they're right-handed and they look to their right, they're making something up. Normally, if they're recalling memory, they look to their left. Um, a lot of judges in court look for that. Yeah. Um, but that, that's, that's a, an indication. It's not 100% accurate, but an indication. Other things, uh, if, they want to, if they try to change the subject quickly, that's another indication that they're not comfortable talking about that. Um, also, action speaks louder than words, so they could promise the moon and back, but they should reassure their partner uh, through action um, if they are uh, not uh, an adulterer. And uh, also, subconsciously, if there's a barrier, if they put a barrier between them and their partner, uh, a, a plate or a cup, and, in, and subconsciously they put it between you and the partner, then that's subconsciously a barrier that they're putting up. Do more women or men hire you in instances like this? Because I know, I know from many, many surveys, I know in Ireland that women are actually more likely to have affairs if they're married than men, and they're less likely to get caught. So what, how do you find it? In, in South London, uh, where I'm based, and I uh, work internationally, I subcontract out, I tend to find that it's 60% females that contact me and 40% men. Mm. Wow, that's very interesting. Now, I know you've got many, many fascinating stories. I know, unfortunately, I'm after running out of time because I could talk to you about this all day to get into the nitty-gritty. We'll have, you'll have to join us on the show again. And, of course, before you do, remind us, you've a book out. Tell us all about that. Yes, uh, my book is... People tell me it's captivating. It's a cross between a, a mystery novel and Fifty Shades of Grey because, you know, <laughs> I've had some customers who have been so grateful. And uh, some, some of the things I've learned um, following people to parties. I mean, in, in, in my book, it mentions what a rainbow party is. It mentions uh, what some of my equipment, high-tech equipment uh, uh, is. And it, it's, a, it's an absolute captivating read. But uh, even better than that, Lorraine, is my private detective training course. Yeah, and how does one do that? Well, if somebody's in lockdown, this is especially a, a great course. It's just all my 20 years brought down, condensed into eight-hour videos online. And it's everything you need to know to start up your private detective agency so that you can then uh, have your own private detective wallet badge. Um, also, it's, it's very profitable. You're helping society. You get 
aftercare from the course, money back guarantee if not satisfied. Yeah. And it's so, it's so cheap to run as well uh, from your own home. Okay. Many of the services I offer, you can run from home as well. Well, Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I hope to God I never have to engage your services or that you, uh, you're <laughs> engaged on my behalf.